of the day. Uh, with that said, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Daniel Hatcher. Daniel comes to us this morning from Washington, DC. He has dedicated the last 14 years of his life working with a nonprofit called Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Part of their shared mission has been making strides towards improving student health and well being by connecting them to nature. Please help me in welcoming Daniel to this digital space. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Nick and Jen. I'm super happy to be with you all today. This is one of my favorite topics to give trainings on, uh, nature activities uh, that can be done indoors or outdoors. And you'll notice that these are all activities that are, are really inexpensive and, and simple as well. So the idea is that these are easy to use things that you can share with families, students, you could use yourself with your own family. Maybe there's act, these are activities that you can use in your own day as well for, for self-care and, and for mindfulness. So my, my vision today is to kind of lay out these activities on the table and, and, and share them with you. We're gonna do a lot of the activities together and I want you to be able to take what serves you and you know, if you say, I don't like that, that's totally okay. Um, but just wanna kind of lay out the activities and do them together and, and you can take what serves you and, and leave what doesn't. And really most importantly, I wanna create a space where we're just, we can all share and I'm gonna learn from you all um today as well so hopefully the the style of this presentation will will support that so i actually don't have any powerpoint slides but i do have a list of resources that that i'll give you all um, so you can get access to all of these activities and tools so feel free to take notes but you don't have to take notes because i want this to be more of an experience um, but of course I want you to know that you can you can access those resources um, after, after the session. And then of course, I'll give you my email as well. I'll put it right here in the chat box, daniel.hatchardhealthiergeneration.org. So if you send me an email and say, send me, this, send me the activities, I'm happy to, to send you a PDF as well. So I definitely wanna be able to stay connected with you all. Um, I'll be on video, of course, would love for you all to be on video if you're comfortable. Um, I have plenty of time for us to share and talk throughout the next 50 minutes, so uh, please use the chat box. Um, uh, feel free to take yourself off mute. Um, I, I want this to be a time where we can all share um, and, and learn together. So before we dive in, I, I did want to just uh, read through the, uh, the objective of the session, just so you know you're hopefully you're in the right place. So simple activities that foster STEM learning and build social emotional learning skills. So you'll notice that the activities that we're gonna to do together are nature-based. They involve nature and animals uh, and the outdoors, but all have a component of connectedness and belonging and sharing and learning from each other um, and infused, infused into it. So like I said, I'll give you the resource list Feel free to interrupt me, ask questions in the chat box um, as we go through as well. And I really want you to know that this is your time, our time together. Um, I'm really just facilitating uh, the activities that we'll do together. So if you're not familiar with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, that's the organization I represent. We're a national children's health nonprofit, and we work to create environments to support children's mental and, and physical health. And the way we do that is by working with educators, just like you all, um, providing tools and resources that you can use and adapt to support uh, young people and, and the families that you serve. So if this is your first time hearing about the Alliance for a Healthier Generation or Healthier Generation for short, I hope you uh, remember easy to use resources to support you in, in helping children and families um, eat healthy, move more and, and feel connected. And I should also say, I'm the director of, of um, community partnerships. So my focus area really is working with community-based organizations, out of school time organizations, before school, after school. So, if you are engaged at all with 
summer learning, expanded learning, weekend learning. That is that is probably my favorite component of the work that I do. So you've gotten that email, daniel.hatchardhealthygeneration.org. So excited to, to be connected with you all. So thank you for, for those of you who are on video. So if that sounds good, if you're ready to, ready to dive right in, give me a thumbs up, give me a wave. I see some thumbs up, awesome. And it looks like we have like 45 people here today. So wow, I am um, super excited to, to share this uh, space uh, with you all. So the first thing we're gonna do is a grounding activity called Flower Breath. And this is from a resource Healthier Generation has called our Virtual Me Moments Hub. So raise your hand or wave if you've found yourself needing a little bit of me time, a moment to recalibrate, take a break, take a breather in the last 18 months. I'm there with you. It's been, it's been quite, a, quite a, a year. So this, is, this resource, our virtual me moments hub, is just a place where you can go to get a lot of different activities to just take a break when you need to take a break. But we're going to do one together I really like called Flower Breath, again, kind of connected to our nature theme for today. So first of all, I want you to get really comfortable, whatever position, I'm going to lean back in my chair a little bit, you can stand up, you can sit down. And as you can tell, I am pretty informal, so, you know, feel free again in the next 15 minutes, however you best learn, I um, will fully support that. So, so get comfy. So I want you to visualize just a beautiful flower. Now it could be a real flower, it could be something in your front yard, something you've seen on a wall. You could make up a flower, uh, whatever you would like to think about, but I want you to visualize this beautiful flower. And the first thing that came to my mind when I just said that to myself, said that my neighbor has a hibiscus flower, so big, beautiful red petals. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. So I want you to take a big deep breath in like you're smelling that flower. So big deep breath in. You can feel your chest to get wide, your stomach get full. Big deep breath in like you're smelling that flower. And then I want you to take a big deep breath out and visualize blowing the petals of that flower. And you can see the petals move fly in front of you. Maybe they stay attached and they're just moving a little bit in, the, in with your breath. So let's do that again. So big deep breath in, like you're smelling a flower, and big deep breath out, like you're blowing on the petals. All right, let's do that a few more times. So big deep breath in, Think about how beautiful that flower is. Maybe you can see one. You might have one in your office space or your home right now. And a big deep breath out. So big deep breath in. Big deep breath out. And if you want to close your eyes, you can do that. If you want to keep your eyes open, whatever works for you. So again, this is your me moment. Big deep breath in. Smell the flower. Maybe you're even visualizing you're around some trees. And a big deep breath out. Let's do it one final time. Big deep breath in. Big deep breath out. And just let it all out on that fifth out breath. So that was flower breath. So pretty simple, but I really like this because it's grounding. If you're feeling stressed or nervous, it's a nice activity to go to. If you're inside, you're staring at a computer screen, just that visualization of something natural, uh, I find really beneficial. So I'd love to know in the chat box, write one word in the chat of how that activity made you feel. And it doesn't have to be positive. I mean, if that activity stressed you out, you could write stress too. So no rules here. 
Thanks, Rose. Grounded. Michelle says calm. I see lots of calm, relaxed, energized. I like that. Happy. Sandy says breathless. Maybe we did that. I, sometimes I do that activity a little too fast. Uplifted. Miley, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You said you have some allergies. I'm allergic <laughs> to flowers, so it feels kind of like something totally different. I use Fair oats. enough. <laughs> Chrysantha says focus, Gidget says relaxed. Tisha says calm and relaxed. Energized. Thank you, Rebecca. Well, thank you for everyone for doing our opening grounding activity and sharing how you feel in the chat. So this is how our session is gonna go today. We'll do an activity, we'll reflect and talk about it. We'll do an activity, we'll reflect and talk about it. Um, and I, and I hope you're, you'll start to think about how you could use, or even better, adapt these activities. So I told this, to, I told Nick this and Jen about a week ago, you know, I'm excited for this session because I'm here to learn as much as I am to share these activities. I do want you to leave with a lot of new strategies and tools you can take, but I really want to learn from, from you all as well. So as you start to think about how you might adapt or use this, please share that in the chat box. And Jolene, thank you for writing in the chat. You felt like you were someplace else. It was great. I think we all agree that, would all agree that in the last year or so, sometimes you just kind of want that little break, want that little bit of escape. So hopefully Flower Breath can do that for you. And again, that is from our collection of act resources um, called Virtual Me Moments. Again, I've linked all of these resources in a one, one page document that's in the folder for this session um, in the conference um, Google Drive. And if you have any trouble, just drop me an email and I'm happy to send it directly to you as well. So give me a thumbs up or a wave. You ready for our next activity? Thank you, thank you. All right. So our next activity comes from a healthier generation resource that we developed last year called Nature-Based Bingo. We developed this fun activity around Earth Day. So I'm sure most of y'all have, have seen or played bingo. We swapped the word bingo for Earth and under each letter, we had a series of activities that families could do together. And one of those was writing a nature haiku. So I thought we could do that together. Um, if, uh, if you all are interested today uh, in participating, again, you can listen, you could, you could play along, whatever works for you, but we're going to do a, a nature haiku. And can someone tell me in the chat box, what is a haiku? What are the, what's the format of a haiku poem? Raina, 575. And the five syllables. Andrea, excellent, thank you. So five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. I'm sure you, you all have written haikus before, but we're gonna do one together. Haikus are typically about something related to nature. So I, I really like using them for for this um, activity. So I want you to, we're gonna take five minutes. I'm actually gonna set an alarm for five minutes. And I want you to think about a memory, an experience that you've had in nature. It could be in the last year. It could be when you were younger. It could have been today. No rules here. But I want you to write a haiku about an experience that you've had in nature. And then at the end of five minutes, we'll do a little bit of sharing. Sound good? Thumbs up, wave. All right, setting the timer. So five minutes, write your own haiku, a memory in nature. And I'm gonna do this as well.
And as everyone's writing haikus, I'm gonna put a link in the chat here that should give you access to my resource list. And again, if you have any trouble, just drop me an email and I'll put that in here too. So we have about two more minutes and don't worry if you can't finish or uh, wherever you are, that's totally okay. And if you finished already, I'm going to put a link in the chat here. This will take you to the Nature Bingo resource. So you can take a, a sneak peek at that. This is one of our most popular resources last year. And if you have your own version of a, of a bingo activity like that, uh, with nature activities or any kind of activities. I'd love to see that. It's about 30 more seconds. Again, no worries, wherever you are is fine. All right, well, our time for writing a haiku is up, but I'm, I'm really excited to muted. share and learn. And I love that all of these poems in the chat box. I'm wondering, would anyone like to That's unmute awesome. and, and share? I'm still having a hard time hearing you. Oh, can you hear me now? You're fine, Daniel, I can hear you. Okay. 
right, let me know if you can't hear me. I'm, let me see if I can scoot a little closer. Yeah. Well, thank you to everyone who wrote these amazing poems in the chat. I'm wondering if anyone would want to unmute and, and share your poem uh, with the group. I will. I'm Sandy Mayberry. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you for volunteering. Sure. So this was when we lived in Colorado and got to go into the mountains with my dad and brother. And I wrote this trout swim in the river, shimmery bodies like opals, loved day with my dad. And that just kind of quickly came to me. It was, it was a day, they must have stalked the river like the day before and we had gotten there early. And all of these trout were just like there for the picking. And I just remember that being so vivid in my mind, all the fish just swimming around and not really going anywhere. It just like, like they wanted to be caught. And so we took what the limit was and packed them away and had them for dinner that night. And they were delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandy, for sharing that. And and uh, elaborate on that, elaborating on that as well. Um, does anyone, would anyone else like to share? I can. Hi. Hey, I'm Kimberly. Kim. Hi, hello. So I have moon and star shimmer, guiding paths in darkness, never lose your light. So I chose something along that line because I try to always think of ways to help kids never lose their darkness or never lose their way in the darkness. So even in the darkest times, there's some form of light, some form of hope that you should always look for and lean towards. So that's why I chose that part of nature. That's beautiful, Kimberly. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Would someone else like to share? Uh, I'll share. Let me turn on my video so people can see that they're actually talking to a human. Uh, Aloha, Maile. <laughs> um, and this is where I actually find my comfort a lot of times um, going to the mountains. That's where I ground myself and I just sit in solitude after a hard week of uh, work. So my haiku is mountain strong embrace, find comfort in its shadow so rejuvenates and that's what it was thank you thanks tisha am i am i saying that correctly tisha don't tisha, i don't thanks. know where the extra i came in <laughs> thanks to my parents but it confuses a lot of people fair enough thank you so much for for sharing and thank you again to everyone who's shared their poems in the chat um i think i could spend the rest the next 30 minutes sharing poems. Um, and maybe I'll capture the ones in the chat box. Um, they're, uh, these are pretty amazing. Bo, I really, I, um, not, to, not to call you out, but I really like the walking on a bridge. It was made of wood and ropes, a beautiful day. That's really nice. These are excellent. So let's do the reflection question. Um, does anyone already use poetry writing with students? Uh, I would love to know your experience in, in doing that or any thoughts on using poetry to connect uh, young people with nature and, and why that might be beneficial. You can write in the chat or you can come off mute. Rebecca, I see your hands raised. Can you guys hear me? I can hear okay. you. Um, yeah, I love using, I work with um, patients with eating disorders and then I've worked with adolescents in wilderness therapy as well. Um, and creative writing and creative expression is such a wonderful way of being able to promote self-worth and self-advocacy 
Um, and especially with eating disorders, I actually did a group last night that we used some creative writing just with like topics. Um, and it just allows people to like, go where they're at. They can draw, they can write a sentence, they can write a whole story. Um, so I think it really is like this small thing that can have all of these like outlets. Um, and it's so simple, all you need is a piece of paper. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. I completely agree. You've you mentioned something that um, really resonates mm -hmm. with me, and that's like the extensions that can come from writing, whether it's drawing or painting or public speaking. Like, there's so many things that a three line poem can can turn into. Um, you know, and, and it's all grounded in, in young people's voices as well. So thank you, Rebecca. So let's, for time, I'm gonna keep us moving. And it's really hard for me to keep moving because these poems are um, incredible. Chrysantha, I, um, I also really love your poem here. Toes in wet black sand, waves crashing on lava rocks, salty ocean breeze. I love, I, that just gives me such a visual. Um, uh, love that. So we're gonna do another activity together. It's gonna to be a little bit more uh, movement oriented. And it's also from the Nature Bingo resource. It's called Rainbow Walk. And um, it's, it, can, it can be as interactive and as active as you want it to be. So lots of choices to adapt this activity. So we are going to go through maybe a few colors of the rainbow. We won't do all of them for time, but we're going to go on a bit of a scavenger hunt. And I want you to find something of that particular color of the rainbow. So I'll call out a color. So you can either look around you if you see something of that color. If you want to need some movement in your morning and want to get up and go find something that you want to show and tell, you can do it that way. Um, you can just use your imagination, whatever you'd like to do. So lots of ways to adapt this, but it's rainbow walk. So let's start with yellow. Find something natural that is the color yellow. Something the color yellow, so you can Look around you, you can imagine, use your imagination, you can get up and move and go grab something. I see, I think Christopher got up. Miley, I think you, I see Miley. Chelsea, all right, you're the first. I, my eyes went down there to your image here. You've got some bananas, awesome. Very nice. Bo, what, is that a post-it? What's a piece of paper? Okay. <laughs> Awesome. My lay, I have to know a leaf. Nice. Say that again, Bo. Uh, post it, yes. Nice. Let's see. Christopher. What is that, Christopher? I can't tell. Uh, e, sea leaf. Oh, very cool. Can you, would you mind to hold it a little closer? Oh, wow. Awesome. A yellow ginger flower. Excellent. Okay, so let's do, let's go with green. Find something the color green. Excellent. I see Christopher has, is that a, um, a lay made of leaves? It's a my lay lay. And Christopher, tell me a little bit more because I'm unfamiliar with that. Um, it's a um, green plant that we find in the mountains and then you can uh, oo -oo it or you strip the outer bark and the leaves and then tie it to make a lake. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Miley, what do you have, a leaf? What type of leaf is that? A hibiscus leaf for in our friend. Hibiscus leaf. Nice, nice. All right. Let's see. Chelsea, did you have something? Another type of leaf. Is that kale? It's kale. Nice. Celine has the yellow interior of a plumeria flower. 
Lisa Marie has soybeans or edamame. I see a little green frog there, Leah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so you all are experts in the rainbow walk. Um, super simple, super fun. So back to our reflection question. Why do you think the, ref uh, the uh, rainbow walk could be a useful activity? So why could Rainbow Walk be useful? Um, for, for us, we use it in our classroom for when the kids are antsy and we need them to move around a little bit more. So we have them go find different colors. Um, this week coming up, our color is, this week is purple. So we'll do something where they have to find things in the classroom that are purple. Mm -hmm bring home things. So it helps us introduce it, the colors of the rainbow. And then we also do it when we're playing outside if they are um, bored and they're not engaging. So then we play it indoors and outdoors. Right, thank you for sharing that. So you use a different color. You have a different color each week and change it that way. Oh, that's a really interesting adaptation. I like that. Yeah, so each week what we do, um, I don't know if you can see the giant rainbow in our classroom. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So that rainbow is actually last year's class and each one of the sections, um, we were in A, B scheduled then. So each half the rainbow is our A and half the rainbow is our B and they use different textiles. So there's hand prints and color pencils and markers and footprints and all the other ones to create that. And then in our classroom, we go through, now we're doing it the, color song. So we're starting, we did Ula Ula, they wear red, they bring something, we do a snack that's red. We have a book called R.E.D. So we do a whole week of the color. So coming yeah, up, we will be purple. Awesome. awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, it's nice that I can see, I can see it behind you. That's a great visual. Love it. I was going to also add that this is a good activity to um, or to become familiar with your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So being aware of what plants are out there, what flowers are out there, what leaves, sticks, all of that stuff is important to know. Thank you, Sandy. And I'm just going to read a few things here in the chat. Rebecca shares mindfulness. Um, awareness, appreciation of surrounding, uh, which Sandy shared as well, uh, gets kids to move around. Thank you, Donna. Christopher, kinesthetic learners, absolutely. Aaron shared, you used it with scouts to help create awareness on hikes so that they could recognize plants. Excellent. I've done an adaptation of this for texture, uh, find different types of textures instead of color, look for, you know, uh, different shapes uh, from bark to leaves, um, grass. And Sandy had asked a question about a copy of the haiku poems and uh, Jennifer confirmed that. So yeah, so just so everyone, um, if, you're just list if you're listening along, uh, we'll definitely capture those poems. Aloha, Daniel. Um, I just wanted to add in Hawaii medium education, um, language and, and vocabulary building is really important. And so from a very early age in our infant toddler program, we do daily walks on our campuses and uh, introduce the names of the plant, the colors of the plant. As the children grow and get older and they start to notice um, uh, the variations of color, we start to introduce the terminology for the variations of color all the way up until our, um, our older high school classes where we start to introduce the nomenclature and the um, traditional use of those plants in our, that we do in our curriculum, um, whether it be for medicinal purposes or canoe building or et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's very, it's, it's, I love your rainbow walk. And, and I think um, culturally it really aligns well with what we do here in Hawaii. So mahalo. Thank you, thank you. And I, I love your, your, how it's, you, you're going even farther. You, the scaffolding of learning language, color, 
other vocabulary words and building up that up towards STEM and science and medicine and you know who knows who knows you could have someone start with a ra simple rainbow walk and and ultimately think about careers in environmental science. Right? So it's it's scaffold its its way up um, as well. So thank you for layering that into into the into the conversation as well. So for time, we're going to keep moving. And again, you're going to you'll get a list of all these activities and resources. And I'm so excited to hear like everyone share stories of how you're already doing a lot of these activities. Um, um, so I hope you're um, getting a, a lot from each other in our in our time together uh, today. So I, I'm going to give you a choice. Would you rather? And you can answer in the chat box. Would you rather do? a physical activity resource or a more kind of conversation resource? So physical activity or conversation? And if we have time, we might be able to do both of them, but I wanna give you a choice. So physical activity or conversation? I see three physical activities. All right, we're gonna do physical activity. Perfect. Oh, okay, lots of physical activities, okay. So this is a resource, Healthier Generation um, has, you you've, might have already done this. This is like one of the oldest, one of the best activities. I, I've put a link to the instructions in the reason my resource folder, it's called Fit Sticks. So Fit Sticks, I'll write it in the chat box. So, um, my version of this and the resource that that you'll get explains to use this activity with popsicle sticks or any kind of wooden stick. These I have three different kinds because you know after a while you start to like accumulate random versions of things. So I have like a paint stick. I have a this one's pointy. It's from like a plant tag, a name tag, and then I have an old-fashioned popsicle stick. So you could do this with anything. So if you had a strip of construction paper, if you had like a blank bookmark, you basically just need something for students or even adults to write on. But for today, we're using, I'm using these three wooden sticks. So we're just gonna do this together. So on these sticks, I've written the name of an animal. And I like doing this activity with animal names with adults because it's a little bit silly and fun. So I hope you like it. So someone, let me see, Shani, I hope I'm pronouncing your, Shani, am I pronouncing your name right? Would you? Yeah, Shani. Do you, this one, the pointy wooden stick, the large like paint stick or the traditional popsicle stick? Which one I prefer? Yeah, pick one. We're good because we're gonna do an activity oh, okay. that's on the back of the stick. Um, let's do the painter. Okay, the paint. So on the back of this stick, I've written whoops, sea turtle. So can would someone be willing to demonstrate for me what's a movement that a sea turtle would make? And you might have to do an exaggerated version of it because we're on video. Anybody want to do their best sea turtle impersonation for me? And we're all going to do it together, so don't worry. Oh, oh Charmaine, thank you. Charmaine, show us your best sea turtle. And you know, you're really going to have to exaggerate and do something in the video so we can all see. All right. So a little bit of a lean forward and arms. All right. So. Shani picked this stick and it's got sea turtle. Charmaine showed us how to do the sea turtle move. So everyone, please do your best, most expressive sea turtle move. Stretch it out. It's the start of your day. All right, for time, I'm gonna pick the next one and it's got bat on it. Would someone demonstrate your, your bat movements? 
Uh, Sandy, I see. Thanks, Sandy. I like that with the hands. Bo's got this. Chelsea's doing that too. Nick's got like a a bat that's kind of chicken like. <laughs> awesome. All right, so that is fit sticks. It's really simple, really silly. So would love for someone to tell me what do you, what's the benefit of uh, an activity like that? Why do you think that might be useful? And let's put a twist. How do you think that might be useful with adults? Getting them out of their comfort zone. Thanks, Miley. Absolutely. Out of your comfort zone. I mean, we're a group of 51 folks. It's pretty silly. Kind of fun. Rebecca says, loosen them up, get some laughs. Sandy says, bring in silliness. Christopher says, icebreakers. Absolutely. So I hope you give Fit Sticks a try. You can adapt it any way you like. I've seen examples of putting a math equation on the back of the, the stick so we could do like 10 repetitions that look like a bat's movement or seconds. So it could be 10 seconds of your best sea turtle. So lots of different ways to adapt and change that up. And Aaron, it sounds like you've done, have you done this activity before? Not that exact one, but similar. Um, we kind of- Oh, I can't, Aaron, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. A little bit, speak really loud. Okay, so uh, we've used similar before um, where we've used the movements for um, like five minute exercise. And the kids kind of would roll the dice and pick one um, for like Zoom meetings. It's their favorite part. <laughs> nice. I like the dice. I've um, I've seen uh, at a conference one time someone made like a, a make do it yourself dice. It's out of a sheet of paper, and then on the dice are the numbers, and, and then we wrote the activity on that side of the dice as well. So you like roll it, and it's like a three and jumping jacks or four and um toe touches things like that it really makes it really interactive where they can they're on video but they're still doing it in front of them so that helped to kind of add a little bit um and they did like i think they did like gorilla climb and then i love to make up their own sometimes yes <laughs> so. that's the I, aaron i would say that's my favorite thing it's just letting kids go with it like make up your own movement activity rules um, can, you, can you imagine the kids in the garden doing something like that? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, you know that. You know, a lot of these activities. I think today it's it. We're doing a lot of these kind of indoors behind our computer. But if the weather's nice, you want to get outside. A lot of these, these things can be ad adapted and made even more active um, if you're if you're outdoors. Mm -hmm. All right, so you all are experts in fit sticks now. I do want to show you one resource that I really like. I'll put it in the chat. This is the Healthy Day Checklist. And it lists just some simple activities to support physical and mental health. So everything from sleep to physical activity to hydration, nutrition. And let me know if you can't access that link. Hopefully it's working. So what I'd love for you to do, we just have a few minutes left, but I'd love for you to, to look at that healthy day checklist. I'll put the link in here again, just in case. Take a look at the healthy day checklist and let me know like what's a nature-based activity that would help you bring one of those practices to life. So what's a nature-based activity that would help you bring one of those activities to life? And you can write your answer in the chat box if you like.
So think about that checklist, sleep, hygiene, self-care, hydration, nutrition, physical activity. What's a nature-based activity that would help you bring one of those to life? Oh, excellent ideas in the chat here. Gardening, eating from the garden, hiking and walking, which is tied to the physical activity, of course, outdoor yoga. Wonderful. Meditation. Excellent. Well, I hope you all enjoy exploring the Healthy Day Checklist. I love your ideas of how you can connect nature and that checklist. Oh, planning mint for hygiene. Excellent idea. All right. Well, I can't believe our time is up, but you all have a list of all of these activities. There's even more activities that we didn't even get to today. So I hope you explore and enjoy it. Um, I'm going to put my email in here. So if you need anything, or if you wanna collaborate or work together on something, drop me an email. I would love to set up a Zoom and chat with you and learn from you. But I think for now, I'm gonna wrap it up and turn it over to you, Nick. Yeah. And uh, thanks for sharing the space with me today. Mahalo, Daniel. And um, uh, we, we had time for questions, but your, your presentation was so interactive. You had absolutely no questions in the chat that I could see. Um, if anybody would like to ask a question, we have time for one question. Um, if somebody would like to uh, unmute and ask Daniel anything, um, now is the time. Uh, if not, I will be doing some housekeeping things before you leave. Okay, and then I also, please note that I put in the chat, the haiku, there's a Google doc in there for all of the haikus that were added into the chat. Mahalo, Jen. All right, and um, and mahalo, Jen, again for being here. I know you have to go open another room. Um, and if there's no questions, uh, I'm gonna wrap things up. So Daniel, mahalo nui again for such a wonderful presentation. Very interactive. And well, I uh, did have a quick question. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't see where we can get to that haiku link. Let me go ahead and throw it in the chat one more time. Thank and you. Let me know if you can. Can you see it in there? Okay. Perfect. Got it. Thank, thank you for capturing the haikus. This is, this is awesome. All right. Um, so mahalo again for an interactive presentation, Daniel, um, joining us from Washington, DC. Uh, we really appreciate your time and your passion for improving uh, Kiki well-being and trying to connect us to nature and the outside world, especially during these challenging times. So mahalo nui to you. Um, and mahalo to all of our attendees for joining us here today. Uh, please take, take some time to complete the workshop survey that's um, in the chat. Uh, if, if you do complete the survey, please make sure that you close out the survey window before starting another workshop survey um, for the next presentation um, or the survey, pop, uh, survey information will not populate. So mahalo to you for that. Uh, please join us for our next session, which was started at 11 a.m. promptly. And mahalo nui to, um, to you, Daniel, again, for your time, sharing your creative, important work, and to everybody for being a part of this day with us. Um, please enjoy the rest of our conference. Mahalo. Take care, everyone. And I'll